What's up, guys and girls? Let's look at Snapchat. It is getting messy, but if you followed my other stuff, you know that this is what I was hoping for. Let's look at the day. Still a rough day after earnings. Let's look at the two week. All right, so it's $8 a share down from 80. What a mess. There is, let me find it. There's an old gap, which is what I'm drooling for. The old gap is between seven and let's call it eight. I am just guessing. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that one day we could fill it. Let's jump over to my valuation sheet. And this is what I'm using to track. And I've made previous videos on this before. What I do is I go to Seeking Alpha and I pull their analyst expectations and they do change. They've recently changed and I plug them into my formulas. And what we do is we look at 10 or 20 years of assumptions, right? These are the best guesses. I have no idea. The analyst, they think they have an idea. So I punch in the earnings and then we make some assumptions because on Seeking Alpha, if you pay for the premium, they will tell you what could happen. Now, these change and they show you the history of the revisions. If you look, they were saying that in 2027 and 28, which is right now they're guessing about a dollar a year in earnings. It used to be $7 a year. When things were rocking and rolling and advertising was booming, people, analysts were saying Snapchat and in the future could earn six, seven dollars a share. Right now, those those uh, guesses or expectations, they're they're crushed. They're down on the ground. So if things ever get better for Snapchat, you better believe that that would come back in the table. But right now, hey, we're probably going to go into a recession. It is not a good sign when banks are failing. So we have these updated estimates. We punch them in. And now we know roughly what this is worth over time. Yes, if this company grows over time and you discount those earnings, it could be worth more because if we look at the, who's bugging me? If we look at the valuation today, this thing should be worth, if it's not growing, this thing should be worth between two and four dollars. But we're going to, we have to believe that it's going to grow. If it, if this were next year, it should be worth between six and $13. If I could get it in the green zone in the next two years between, let's say two and six dollars, we, there's a, it, it becomes a crazy opportunity because assuming just with the bearish analysts are expecting right now, assuming that this company does grow, it's 2023 right now. If we look at 2033, according to this magic spreadsheet, Snapchat could be somewhere between 50 and $160. We discount that back. And assuming, let's say I do get it at five bucks. Now my magic worksheet tells me yeah, it would be an, a Kager, an annualized compounded return of 41%. In other words, if I pay five and it goes to 160, the return a bank would have to pay me to match that would be 41%. That's more, more than 10x. That's like 30x. This is fantasy land. So what, what's wild is the peg one, which is just 25 growth rate times that earnings is 80 in 10 years. My spreadsheet is saying that if the company does okay 
it'll be worth 80 or higher in the future. And that's where it was like a year and a half ago. That tells you how crazy this market was. Now, times were good and Snapchat was earning more, but man, those days are long gone. This thing's $8 down from 80. Isn't that nuts? Isn't that insane? It's it this isn't the only one. If you look at ARC, a bunch of stocks happened to from good times and good valuations and long assumptions to where we are right now. And and a lot of stocks aren't even cheap yet. A lot of stocks aren't even cheap. Let's look at the at the Russell. The Russell looks it could be breaking down. If that breaks down, that'll give me my my entry that I'm looking at for Snapchat. Let's just go back. I'm not bearish the stock. I'm bearish the price. I want the opportunity. And just because I'm bearish on it doesn't mean I don't have any exposure because I do like it ultimately. So if we look at Snapchat, it's worth $8. And I'm playing around with the year, year and a half puts. No, I'm not buying them, if that's what you're wondering. If we look at the puts, it's going to be hard to see. But I want to get in at five, and someone will pay me 64 cents to buy at five. If I write the put, if I short the put, I am selling option for income. They pay me 64 cents because I take the negative position. They pay me to buy it at five. I'm just keeping busy because this will still give me a healthy return. If it never goes to five, I will make a return. I don't worry about how much it is. But really, if it goes down to five, I want to get these shares. So that's the strategy. That's why I do the valuation. I need to know what it can go down to and what the opportunity is. Then I go trade options on that. Am I going to buy calls? Not in this environment. There's no point. When you buy an option, you're borrowing money. When you pay for premium, you're buying the opportunity to use leverage. The way it's priced, it's a loan. So I'm not going to do that. But I will sell the puts. I will lend to the bears so I can get shares lower. I hope this was interesting. I really love my worksheets. Uh, I've been giving it away. It's it's. I may put it in the link, but there's formulas in here, and I can change the growth rate. I can change the earnings over time. I can adjust the, you know, ten year forward growth rate. You want to have a map. Otherwise, you don't know where you're going. Hope that was helpful. Cheers.